Hello, and welcome to the 31 Days of Halloween. I am Exalight, and this is my channel. I found this article, and I thought it was interesting, so I thought perhaps you may too. Have you ever been alone, but knew there was somebody watching you? Have you ever been in public? And felt somebody watching you. And you look up and suddenly make eye contact with somebody who had, in fact, been watching you. Sometimes my family and I will pick somebody and look at them to see if they'll notice. And they almost always do. What is that? What is that sense? And why do some people or places feel creepier than others? Why do some buildings or parks, forests, homes suddenly have that vibe, that, ugh, I need to get out of here feeling? Well, let's talk about this article, shall we? Also, if you have found this during the 31 days of Halloween, there's a little trick. 30 out of the 31 videos, because I made a mistake, have something in common. The exact same thing in common in 30 videos. What could it be? Hmm, the list is endless, isn't it? But the fact that I made a mistake could help you figure out what exactly it is that connects these 30 videos. What do they have in common? And if you are the first one to point it out, you will win an Amazon gift card. If nobody figures it out, and I hope you do, then the people who have left comments, they are automatically entered to win the gift card. So please feel free to leave a comment. All right, let's talk about that. Ugh, creepy vibe. This from Unexplained Mysteries. There have been many reports of hikers in the wilderness experiencing strange sensations, a sixth sense that something is amiss. Mainly, nothing is heard or seen. The forest or trail can go eerily quiet. Birds stop singing suddenly. And there can often be a feeling that you are being watched by someone or something. The feeling can be frightening and unsettling. Some places have a bad energy, a feeling that is something off or giving you the creeps, just sitting and doing nothing, but then the sort of overwhelming feeling of the other. And then I needed to get out of there now. I'd feel my senses narrow, almost like I was about to black out. Pressure in my head, on the back of my eyes. Sounds like underwater. Whatever the opposite of an out-of-body experience is, I felt it then, too. An extreme self-awareness. I had almost tunnel vision, and I was aware of another body. Or two or a lot of them. I was aware of a crowd, even though I was alone. I felt the presence of a big group. These creepy places can be abandoned or haunted houses. The sites of burial grounds or scenes of murder or battles. But even the trails in well-used forests and national parks have been known to give hikers these vibes. Your pulse quickens, the hair on the back of your neck stand on end. 
you feel uncomfortable. These feelings are often stronger walking with a small child or with a loved partner. Some hikers have told of little voices in their heads telling them to leave an area quickly. Often they do. Those that ignore these friendly voices can sometimes regret it or never be able to tell the tale of what went wrong. As a side note, I heard once in a self-defense class that humans are the only animal on the planet that talk themselves out of their gut feeling. You pull up into your house, it's all dark except for the bedroom light, and you specifically remember turning it off. But you talk yourself out of it, you think. Perhaps someone went in after I did and turned it on. Or maybe it was a fluke. Perhaps I'm remembering it wrong. We are the only animal that doesn't feel something in our gut and start to react. So what is happening? What is this feeling? What are the theories about it? Well, humans have a genetic predisposition activating our fight or flight impulse. Something given us a sense that all is not well and to prepare to get the hell out of there. This impulse can be increased when we are caring for a child or with a loved one. These creepy feelings may be useful if they help you maintain vigilance when threat is uncertain. They also help you manage the balance between self-preservation and self-presentation, i.e. presenting yourself in a socially desirable way. Evolutionary psychologists have proposed the existence of agent detection mechanisms. These are processes that have evolved to protect us from harm at the hands of predators and enemies. If you're in secluded woods alone at night and hear the sound of something in the bushes, you'll respond with a heightened level of arousal and attention. You'll behave as if there is a willful agent present who is about to do you harm. If it turns out to be a gust of wind or a deer, you lose little by overreacting. But if you fail to activate the alarm response and a true threat is present, the cost of your miscalculation could be very high, life-threatening. Therefore, we have genetically evolved to err on the side of detecting threats in ambiguous situations. This is called hypervigilance. Creepy feelings could be caused by being watched by wildlife, a bear, a mountain lion, a wolf, or perhaps something more sinister or predatory. Maybe Sasquatch causing hypervigilance. Maybe there's a serial killer or someone doing something illegal. Someone who's out looking for someone or someone who is not wanting someone in the area which causes hypervigilance. Negative energy caused by an event. Murders. Wartime battles. Some believe that meteorological changes can cause sudden unease in both humans and animals. Influence of the lunar cycle. The light from the moon and its impact on circadian rhythms. There has been some research done, most notably by Vic Tandy, that found that there is a certain range of sub-audible frequencies around 19 hertz that can provoke feelings of fear and unease in humans. In his case, he was in his lab when he started to feel distinctly not alone and even believed he saw something like a spirit. This phenomenon is known as infrasound. Could it be something supernatural? A ghost, a spirit, a portal, other dimensions? 
whichever it is, trust your gut. Believe that inner voice is telling you to run like hell. And then it's probably a good idea to take that advice. It's better to be safe than sorry and live to tell the story.